After surviving over 1500 days, I decided to set out on a quest to complete the game. This means I will be getting all the advancements in Minecraft. Then I can truly say I conquered the game. Anyways, grab some snacks, stay hydrated and enjoy these next 70 days. There is one thing that makes getting advancements a lot easier, it is a mob switch. As mentioned in the world tour, the mob switch I have at the moment is currently broken. Well, at least the nether side. What happened is that the zombies always take damage when transporting them to the overworld and back to turn mobs spawning on and off for the nether. Some of them even picked up items and now the mob cap is not filled anymore. So yeah, now I will finally fix this and redesign the entire thing. This time I won't be using zombies anymore, but wardens as they are much easier to get. Also, I want the mob switch to be far away from any nether farms as well. That way, to enable mobs spawning again, we simply need to stop chunk loading the wardens instead of transporting them through a portal. This raises another problem though. In single player, when logging back into the world, chunk loaders will break until I, the player, fly over there and restart the chunk loader. So how do I kickstart the chunk loading of the mob switch without me having to fly all the way over there every single time I log into the world? Well, there is really only one solution. Using a special contraption that detects whenever I log into the world, which is located in the spawn chunks, I can kickstart an entire chunk loading line all the way out to the mob switch. I think it's easier to explain once it is built. So let's first gather some resources for this machine. Okay, these are all the resources needed for the new mob switch. As I don't want to see the chunk loading line all the time, I decided to move it to the bottom of the nether instead of keeping it on the nether roof. So let's make some space for the chunk loading line. Alright, this is the entire tunnel dug out. There is already some concrete there which keeps the lava out. Anyways, let's build the chunk loading line. Next, I need to link all these portals to the overworld, so let's go! Now that all of them are linked, let's test whether it actually works as well. This one is working, this one as well, and so are all the others too. Perfect! We're almost done. There are only three more things to build. The first one is the detection. This will trigger every time I log into the world, starting the entire thing. It makes use of a Frostwalker armor stand to freeze water whenever the chunk is loaded. This sends a minecart to the nether, loading the nether side upon logging in, and the minecart returns shortly after. The next thing is the actual mob switch for the overworld. The chamber for the nether is already built, which is back there. So let's build the Warden Farm. All that's left now is the input panel. As I don't want to fly down here to turn the mob switch on and off, I will need to have a signal tower to the nether roof where all the inputs are. And without further ado, let's finish the mob switch. Alright then, let me explain how this whole contraption works, so bear with me. In the spawn chunks is this detector. It loads the nether as soon as I log into the world. These frostwalker boots freeze the water which updates the observer and sends a minecart to the nether. When the minecart returns, it gets broken and goes back into the dispenser. The nether side simply sends the minecart back. All this does is load this redstone clock which sends a repeated signal to all the chunk loaders and it also loads the first chunk loader. All these levers to the side make it so that only the last redstone dust turns on and off. I am not even sure whether this reduces lag. If if it does, great, otherwise, oh well. Anyways, this first chunk loader loads the next one, which then in turn loads another one. This chains all the way until the end. As soon as this one is running, it loads this clock in the back. This for one powers the snow block, which I'll get to later, but it also sends a signal via this instant wire. 
This pulsing instant wire keeps the pulse extender powered, but only as long as that clock at the other end is loaded. If this were to run out, it would send a signal up the scaffolding tower. This redstone block, when it receives a signal, it will disable the clock and stop the chunk loading completely. Then on the nether roof, using this snow block, we can do exactly that. As you can see, the chunk loading has stopped and eventually the clock in the back, which sends pulses through the instant wire, will be unloaded as well. Now this pulse extender ran out, which indicates that the final chunk isn't loaded anymore. If we turn it back on, it starts all the chunk loaders and it receives the pulses again. This is all just so we can chunk load the mob switches. Then these two node blocks can control the overworld and nether switch individually. Down below again we receive those signals and transmit them using instant wires as well. The middle one is for the overworld while the one on the left is for the nether. Sending a signal down the nether line, it would retract this redstone block, enabling this chunk loader which loads the wardens in the nether. The overworld signal extends this block which enables the chunk loader for the overworld mob switch. This one is also a special portal as it is the same one the wardens are coming through for the nether switch. And yeah, this node block I mentioned earlier simply lures the wardens out of the portal. Over here is then the chamber for the wardens. Through this portal is where we get the wardens from. Currently it doesn't spawn wardens as my warden switch is active, so I'll have to disable that one first to farm some wardens for the mob switches. Using this lever we can keep them in the overworld or send them to the nether. This portal also links up to the one I just came through. There is also a safety feature that locks the input of those two node blocks if the destination chunk is not loaded. Now to test whether these two signals work as well, for the overworld it should extend the concrete block next to the dispenser, which works perfectly. For the nether it should retract the redstone block, which is also working. Well then, it is time to form some wardens and stock the mob switches. Let's disable the warden switch and now we can spawn wardens again. Let's send this one to the nether. And for the overworld, the process is even easier. Okay, and now it is broken. Hmm. Oh, I see. I need to move the warden chamber in the overworld a few blocks up. Should be simple enough to fix. A little later. Okay, now it is working and all I have to do is AFK here for some time. One. Later. Now the overworld side is stocked with 140 wardens. The mob cap is actually only 70 per player, so why double it? Well, for some upcoming projects, I'll have my old account on in Spectator for one, to chunk load some stuff, and also to record the time lapses there as it will be stationary. With my main account where I actually play in the world, I constantly move around, unloading chunks left, right, and center, which can make the time lapse look really bad. Anyways, let's stock the nether switch as well. Eventually. Okay, this is the final warden for the nether as well. Now let's wait until until they make their way into the chamber. Six hours later. So they don't seem to get in there properly. Let's go help them a little bit. Well, well, well. That is done as well. This warden there is actually fine. Let's do a final test to see whether everything works. Let's turn off the nether switch and it works. Then enabling it works as well. Then for the overworld, it turns off as it should and it also turns back on. Perfect! Everything is working! And then, in the nether, the warden started to despawn for some reason. I tried to recreate the same scenario in creative, but only found more reasons they shouldn't have despawned. So, once they were all gone, I built a different warden cage a chunk further away from the chunk loader and restocked it. Now it works perfectly. It must have been a fluke that they despawned. Well then, let's finally start with the advancements. Since I have been playing for quite some time at this point, I have already gotten a lot of the advancements already. Out of the 110 advancements, I got 68 already, leaving 42 to go. Let's start with a couple of the easier ones. The first one requires me to link a compass to a lodestone. So let's smelt some ancient debris for the netherite ingot and craft the lodestone. And here we go, 41 left to go. Then let's craft the respawn anchor and take 4 glowstone with us. Then in the nether we can max out the anchor and get another one done. Then let's fly out 1000 blocks through the nether and make a portal. This way I have traveled well over 7000 blocks in the overworld giving us another advancement. Then there are two advancements which require a strider. After using a warp fungus on a stick on the strider, I didn't get the advancement. It wasn't until some time later that I found out I actually had to right click with it. Then let's bring this guy to the overworld. I made this lava pool to ride the strider, but sadly it doesn't work like that as I have to ride it in a straight line. So I got some more lava and checked off another advancement. 
I even named him and left him here. Don't worry, I'll come back for this guy in a future episode. Then I simply need to read a chiseled bookshelf with a comparator. It can even be an empty one, that doesn't matter here. There we go, that's another one down. Then the bullseye advancement. It seems to be pretty hard as the arrows shot with a bow have some variance to it, but there is a way to cheese it. Simply shoot some arrows onto a trapdoor above a target block, then hook up some redstone 30 plus blocks away and open the trapdoor. Then one of the newest advancements requires four pottery shirts to make a decorated pot. Simple enough. Another really quick one is walking on top of powdered snow with leather boots. It prevents you from sinking into it. Then let's get a goat into a boat for another one. Do you mind getting in there sir? There we go. Then surprisingly I've never fished in this world before, so let's take care of that. Then I also need a fish in a bucket as well to cross off another advancement. Now there are 30 more to go. Then just north of my starter base is a small meadow biome. Here I simply need to play some music. Behind the raid farm is a pillager outpost. Let's go check whether there are some LA's as well for two more advancements. And sure enough there are LA's, so let me give you an item. Then this guy gets a cake and then I need to link it to the note block and here we go. That's another two down. There's actually also a lush cave down here here. I still have to get an axolotl as well, so let's focus on that next. There is one. Let's make him our new pet. Then we also need to use him to help us fight a monster. So let's release him on this round here. And there we go. Well done, good boy. Let's take you with us again. Then let's use our spyglass next. We can get three advancements done with this and the first one requires a parrot. So let's go to the good old jungle. This is actually northeast of the slime farm. In the world tour I actually forgot about this little spot. This is where I get my turtle eggs from. Anyways, further beyond is the jungle. So let's look for the the pesky bird and there he is next i need to spot a gas so let's disable the nether switch which is really easy to do now and go to a soul sand valley and after some flying around there is our gas as well then let's head to the end there i was greeted with this Anyways, now let's make some space to respawn the dragon once more. This is the Witherose farm, which will be replaced with a better one next episode. And here is the last advancement for the spyglass as well. Then I need to collect some dragon's breath as well. There we go. Now let's take care of her. Next stop, end city. All you need is an ender pearl, get the levitation effect and teleport to the ground. That's another one checked off. Only 20 more to go. Then I want to focus on the crossbow advancements. There are four of them in total, but first let's get a crossbow. Then I need to fire the crossbow. Yeah, that's all there is for this first one. Then I need to kill a pillager with it. There we go, simple enough. Luckily I also had some phantoms spawning in the same night. After trapping them, I can simply hit them twice with my pickaxe and use the crossbow for one of the harder advancements. And at last, the hardest one of the crossbow challenges, we need to kill five different mobs with one arrow. So let's start gathering them. First, here's a piggy. Next is this cow, then here's a sheep as well. As the horse is too big to fit in a one by one hole, I can't really use it. Let's get a chicken in there as well. Now I was struggling to find a fifth mob that I could use, but then I decided on a bee. Not something you would usually use for this advancement, but hey, maybe it'll work as well. And there we go. Now let's push in a slab and also push them down so that the bee is in the bottom part of this little cage. Since the chicken is on the other side, let's shoot from there. I don't know whether that makes a difference, but let's do it anyway. Now the moment of truth. And here we go. This one is definitely one of the harder ones. Then let's trade with the stars. We need a villager at build limit. This is easiest if I use a flying machine. I said this is easiest if I use a flying machine. Hello, what's going on? After all this hunting for advancements left, right and center, my redstone knowledge seems to have left the chat. In this video there we go, that was easy. And here we are at the top of the world, give me this map. Let's leave this guy up here, then let's die. I'm joking, well, kinda. Basically, I need to jump from the top of the world to the bottom. Obviously, I'm gonna use a totem, but I still wanted to try to do it legit by clutching with a water bucket. And here we go! Hmm, does it not work when the totem pops? Anyways, let's try that again. And again. After popping about a million totems, I figured out that I need to fall one block more, so I simply added a jump. 
here we go. Sadly, I didn't manage to clutch it, but oh well. Then, as I was brushing some gravel, I fought some drowns and finally got a trident. This will be super useful later for when I get a thunderstorm. So, let's quickly go enchant it. After I figured out I was searching in the wrong spot for the sniffer eggs, I changed location and soon enough found some. In total I got three of them, which should be plenty for now. Let's head back to the swamp and set up a little enclosure to hatch them. I only placed two of the eggs so far, as we need to feed a baby sniffer, called a snifflet, a torch flower seed. Since only adult sniffers dig up the ancient flowers, we need them to grow up sometime before I hatch the last one as well. Later. And after 10 minutes they hatched into two snifflets. Now let's wait until they grow up. Two hours later. As you can see, I also also hatch the third sniffer already and the two adults should start digging up seeds. Three weeks later. Yes he did the thing. Let's see and it is a pitcher pot. We need the other one for the advancement though. Many months later. And another pitcher pot. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Okay we got it. There is a torch flower seed. Let's feed it to the little one and here we go. That's another one down. Then let's simply plant one of the pitcher pots for the final sniffer advancement as well. The next one is one of the harder ones. It is adventure time. This means I need to visit every single biome. I have this mod that shows me a little more information for the advancements. Here you can see the biomes that I have never come across. To make it a little easier for me, I once again made use of a web tool called Chunk Base. It saves me a lot of time looking for these biomes. Through this portal we should have a lot of the biomes all together. Well then, let's see. Here's the snowy plains. Over here are ice spikes. This is a frozen ocean and a little snowy beach. There's also a deep frozen ocean. Then some distance away is a windswept forest. Further over here is a windswept gravelly hills biome as well. And here's the snowy taiga. Now there's only one biome left, the stony peaks. That one is actually amidst the jungle we were at earlier for spotting a parrot. And here we go. That leaves us with the final 10 advancements. Next, I want to focus on the monsters hunted. We need to kill every mob at least once. There are only two left, so this shouldn't be too hard. First, let's go back to that snowy area I was just at and wait for nighttime. Later that same evening. And here's our target. <laughs> That's the stray down, only the ender might left to go. That one will be easy as well. Here it is, and dead it is. That's another one of the hard ones checked off. For the next one, I need to breed every mob. Let's start with the nether mobs. There are only two of them, and the first one is the strider. The other one is the hoglin, which is the only hostile mob you can breed. Then here's a baby axolotl. Let's take him all with us. Yoink, yoink, yoink. Then as I was collecting some of the casts for another advancement, I also bred them. Then just in this bamboo jungle, I found some pandas. This crosses another mob off the list. Since there is only one camel per desert village, let's lead this one to another village. And here we go. First, I tried to breed these two wolves, but this didn't work. Apparently, they need to be tamed first, and here we go. Then the foxes can be quite hard to catch, but with leads, this shouldn't be too hard either. As for the donkey, they also need to be tamed to be able to breed them. Same thing goes for horses. We also need to crossbreed a horse with a donkey to get a mule as well. Then here is a baby goat. Only 5 mobs left. Next to my base is a savanna plateau biome which allows for llamas to spawn. Once again we need to tame them first. Then here's the rabbit, simple enough. And here I captured an ocelot. Here's another one and even a third one as well. Now let's feed them. Somewhat close to the raid farm is also a mushroom fields biome and the penultimate mob has been bred as well. All that's left is the sniffer. So let's first afk until we get 2 torch flower seeds. And here we go, that's this advancement finally done as well. Then let's get some more pets, specifically cats. There are 11 different breeds and so far I have the Jelly, Ragdoll and Persian Cat. These are the three that sit at my starter base on the cat tree. The easiest way to get more cats is to visit villages. This is where I found one of the camels and also bred two cats together. So here's the tabby, this one's the red cat, here's a British short hair. And this one is the white cat. I managed to knock out four more cats in this village alone. Then another one spawned in that same village, the calico. I left them at the portal, but I will go back for those in the future. After looking through quite some more villages, I had only found cat breeds I already had, but eventually I found a black cat. And after another six villages, I finally found a Siamese cat as well. The only one that was left was the witch's cat. The old black cat is found at a witch hut, so let's fly over here. Let's take out the witch and here we go. Another advancement checked off. 
The next one requires me to bring a gas to the overworld. The easiest way to do that is with a little setup. And after realizing I built it in the wrong location, I moved it over here. Sometime later and we have a ghast. Let's send him to the overworld and get our advancement. Well, that didn't go as planned. Let's take some safety precautions and wait again. And here is another one. This time it should work. Finally! For these next three, we need to use the trident. While two of them need a thunderstorm as well, the other one doesn't. Very well. Let's test out our trident. Now it is time to wait for a thunderstorm. As I had to AFK for a different project, I listened to the weather and after a long time, I heard the thunder. I stopped everything and quickly went to my base as there is a village just south of it. Unfortunately, there was no villager left, so I hurried to my starter base and went north. When I found the villager, I quickly placed the lightning rod and struck it. Sadly, I was too late. The thunderstorm had stopped before I could get there. I set my spawn at my starter base and went back to AFKing and waiting for another storm. Couple of hours later, it started again. I flew as fast as I could to my starter base, I grabbed the villager from the villager breeder this time and struck the lightning rod. I quickly wanted to strike the villager as well for the other advancement, but once again, I was too slow. The thundering had stopped once more. One pair of pants later. Third time's the charm, right? And here we go. I finally had all the advancements using the trident as well. Before I move on to the final three advancements, I would like to finally take care of something I wanted to do since episode 4. I never collected all the items that should be sorted in my storage system. I simply left some of them out as I was too lazy to get them. There aren't that many, but some of them are a bit harder to acquire. But yeah, let's just get it done. And here are all the items sorted as well. The conduit is the one item I have only one of, as the other one is in use already, which I'll show you later. Anyways, now I finally have all the items sorted that I wanted ever since I built this base. The final three advancements are a Furious Cocktail, a Balanced Diet, and of course, how did we get here? There is no need to get a Furious Cocktail, as I need all the potion effects for the hardest advancement anyway, so you can kinda ignore that one. Well then, let's start by eating a lot of different food. The only food left is the enchanted golden apple. As I lost all the ones I had last episode, I first need to go and get another one. Should be simple enough, as the warden switch disables wardens from spawning, making ancient cities peaceful. And here it is. I actually managed to find quite a few of them, but I'm not gonna eat one now, as I need to eat a god apple for the how did we get here advancement anyways. That way we'll get all three advancements at the same time, completing this quest. As this is the hardest challenge in the game, we need a little bit of a setup. In case you're not familiar with this advancement, it requires a player to have all 20 27 effects applied at once. 11 of them can be acquired with potions. These are poison, slowness, slow falling, weakness, jump boost, speed, invisibility, regeneration, strength, water breathing and night vision. The other effects will get through different methods. Together with a god apple for fire resistance, absorption and resistance, a puffer fish for hunger and nausea, a suspicious two for the wither effect and one for blindness, they make up all the consumables. The remaining 9 effects have to be acquired differently. As I don't want the warden next to me, I'll simply use my warden switch that also applies the darkness effect constantly. So the location for the setup will be right there. For haste, we'll simply need a beacon nearby. The glowing effect will be applied using this dispenser. Then let's also install a conduit for the conduit power effect. This is the second conduit I mentioned earlier that is missing in the item sorter. For dolphin's grace, we need a dolphin obviously. So let's grab one and bring him over.
You saw nothing. Let's try that again. And here we go. Then for the worst part of it all, it is the levitation effect. We can only get that one when a shulker hits us. Meaning we'll need to bring a shulker all the way from the outer end islands to the main end, then to the overworld and into this setup. Yeah, this is gonna take a while. So here's a quick rundown of that adventure. Let's build some rails and grab this guy out of the shulker farm. Then let's put him in a boat. Then let's send him to the main island. Again, some rails, send him to the portal, eject him, put him in a boat again, drive the boat close to the portal, flush the boat into the portal and destroy the boat. Now he's in the overworld. And then uh, put him in a boat again, build some rails to the setup, send this guy on a journey, eject him, pick him up with a minecart, and finally send him down into the setup. Now he is trapped there. The slime blocks are there as we can still mine them instantly while having mining fatigue. Anyways, that now makes 24 out of 27 effects. The final three are mining fatigue, bad omen, and hero of the village. These we need to get before we arrive at the setup. And that marks all the preparation complete. Before I attempt this, let me give you a rundown of what I need to do. First, I need to pick up hero of the village at the rate farm. This effect lasts for 40 minutes so there is no hurry. Then I built this portal which leads to this pillager outpost where I then can pick up bad omen. This effect lasts for 100 minutes as well so no pressure. Just northwest of the outpost is an ocean monument that hasn't been raided yet. There I get my mining fatigue from and that's when the timer starts. This effect only lasts 5 minutes. After that I need to quickly hurry to the setup and while doing so get my hunger bars down at least by two and a half. Once here I need to throw all the potions down, eat the god apple, break the slime blocks, get hit by the shulker, eat the Puffer fish, press this button, swim in this little pool and eat both suspicious stews. And then I hopefully have the hardest advancement in the game along with the other two that are still missing. So yeah, quite the process there. Well then, I am all set up and ready to go. Yes, I did it! I got all three of the remaining advancements all together. Now that I have done all of them, I can frame this bucket as it is the item that represents the how did we get here advancement. There we go. And at last, of course, the comments. The first one I want to note down is this idea here. I will change it slightly as I will build a massive industrial district. There I will have every single farm and also they will be so much faster than the ones I have right now. But yeah, they will be connected to a central storage with auto crafting and everything once the next update is out. The second idea is the following. This is definitely the long term goal I want to achieve in this this world. Basically everything I do in this world in one way or another leads to the mega base that will be located in the end. This however will be in the far future though. Then here is also the new entry for this episode. And finally the comment of the video. Thank you so much. Yes these videos take an enormous amount of time to create but I love every step of making them. Seeing your feedback in the comments brightens my day every single time. So once again thank you for your comment. This has been a fun adventure and a challenging quest for sure but at last I am done. Just to confirm 
I have all 110 advancements done. The first tab is just for data packs. This time, there is no teaser for what's coming up in the next episode. You'll just have to wait for that one. Well then, I hope you enjoyed this episode as always, and I will see you in the next episode.